Welcome to the Sports Entrepreneur Show powered by The Ninja Zone, the only podcast for sports entrepreneurs that gives you an inside look into what it takes to turn your passion for sports into a business. Hello everyone, I'm Scott Russell and welcome to The Sports Entrepreneur featuring Casey Wright and powered by The Ninja Zone. Our weekly dose of inspiration comes from your host Casey Wright's own Instagram page, and you can follow her on Instagram at CaseyWrightNZ. This week, Casey shares a quote from one of her favorites, Brene Brown, who said, People are hard to hate close up. Move in. And that is a good introduction to this week's episode in which Casey has a conversation with Dr. Megan Knoll, Director of Marketing at Ninja Zone and an Early Childhood Specialist, on connecting with and marketing to millennials. For the most part, millennials are the ones with kids right now, and they are spending more than any generation has. Megan and Casey both have some great insights on reaching these people, and here's a hint, it's through their minds and their hearts. Enjoy the talk, and be sure to stick around until the end where I'll recap the conversation and let you know how to sign up for exclusive bonus content. Here's Casey with Dr. Megan Noel. Hey everyone, Casey here. Welcome to the Sports Entrepreneur Podcast. Another fun episode for me today because I get to interview Dr. Megan Knoll. She is the Director of Marketing for Ninja Zone as well as um, she has an extensive background in early childhood education and marketing and What we are going to talk about today is marketing to millennials, of which she is one. So, (laughs) so Megan, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a, um, that was a big, you know, as I'm doing research for this, this podcast is realizing that I am a millennial. um, You are. At the end, yeah. So, and that range, it's a huge range of, of people from, you know, early 80s to 2000. So big, big group. I think, you know, we hear so much about millennials and how they are in in every way, shape or form, right? There's just talk around millennials. But from a sports entrepreneurship perspective, uh, most of our listeners have, let's just say that we're serving the millennials as buyers. So we today, I mean, you are a, a marketing guru. You you educate all of us and do everything for Ninja Zone from from public relations to social media communication. I mean, you know, we're obviously not um, a four thousand person company, so it really all resides under you, Megan. So first of all, thank you for everything you do for this company and all of your expertise. Thank you, oh, Mucho. Thanks. Uh, But today specifically, what we want people to learn is about marketing to millennials because they, the millennials are now parents. They're now the parents that we're serving in many of us that are at least in the kids uh, sports business space. Those are the people that we're serving and they're coming into the, they're the next generation of buyers and they are, they're they're what's making our economy run right now. Um, they're, they're the biggest spenders. So you're absolutely right. Millennials are a huge population of the U.S. I mean, there are 83 million people in the U.S. considered millennials. And of that you know, age range of that 19 to 37 year olds is what they are currently, um, 40% of those are parents. So as a sports entrepreneur, it's super important to keep this population in mind because they are not only sports and fitness oriented, but they're exactly your avatar. They're their parents and um, who you're reaching out to. So again, like I, as I was kind of doing my research for this, I like listened to this list of traits that millennials are categorized. They're not like the uh, narcissists that I think they get they get, get a bad rap for, but they really are. I, their research has shown that they're more collaborative, self-expressive, diverse, better educated, more open-minded, optimistic, mobile, and social than all of the older generations. And it is the largest generation in history and even outnumbers baby boomers. So I thought that was kind of cool. That is Giant good information people that you have at your disposal. So, so in, in our particular space, um, you know, we're looking at the children of the millennials and I've actually heard them labeled generation alpha, which I think, you know, every generation has some 
that everybody tries to give them a different label and some of them stick like millennials, but generation alpha being the kids of millennial parents. And did you say, did you say 19 to 37? Is yeah. that what? Okay. Yeah. And I know That's at least big. Yeah. At least <laughs> for us, like in our, you know, our group at Ninja Zone, who we market to that 25 to 44 year old kind of fits exactly in that millennial um, pocket. So yeah, and you had mentioned about their spending habits. And I think that's notable because it's only going to be increasing. Like I think they spent $600 billion in 2018 and just alone, just for the millennials. So I think as entrepreneurs, we have a, you know, a, a huge opportunity here to kind of capitalize on that spending. For sure. Have you seen in your research the difference between um, spending on products and spending on experiences? Yeah. Um, so they actually three out of four millennials prefer to buy experiences over tangible items, which is yeah. perfect for the sports industry. Sports and entertainment. You mentioned earlier how, you know, they're not the entitled whatever that a lot of trans <laughs> people right. yeah. refer to them as. And that's that's been my experience too. Like I hear people kind of rant about, oh, they, you know, need a cookie or a trophy for everything. And I'm like, you know, like, like hold up because, because of people like me who coached them as they were kids, I've also realized that they are the most coached and structured generation we've ever had, which is a reason why they're the most educated. Right. And they seem like more empathetic as well. So it's like, yeah, they got their participation trophies when, you know, I definitely got a participation trophy every time I, every season in soccer. <laughs> um, but I think that that has led them to be more loyal and more empathetic and being able to connect with brands, which is what I think is the opportunity that we're seeing right now is just how loyal some of these millennial customers can be to the brands that they connect with. So that that's an opportunity to um, small businesses, particularly to connect with their communities and with, you know, you know, online with these people to kind of build those relationships and capitalize on that. How do we do that specifically? Like generally we need to connect. We need sure. to connect with them specifically. Like if you're in charge of my marketing department, which you are, <laughs> <laughs> what do we do on Monday? What are, what are we doing if I am the marketing director of a small sports service-based sports business? What am I getting set up on Monday? Right. Well, there's, I mean, there's so much noise out there with media and being inundated. I mean, you know, like you're getting hit with the radio and the TV and on your phone, like there's ads everywhere. And so it's about um, just standing out and authenticity you know, digital marketing is such a big platform. And I think especially with our targeting, I think just knowing your audience and being able to target down to them and be able to create content and engage with them so that you're meeting them at their level. So it's not, it's kind of taking off this daunting um, marketing to everybody. Like, you know, it used to be when you're a small business that you felt like you couldn't compete if you didn't have a huge purse of money to be able to go out and spend. But now I think with all of the options out there, you can find your audience and really talk to these people at a local level or at a you know demographic level that you didn't have that opportunity before. And you can do that now. So starting out, I mean, just like, where do you even start? I mean, I think yeah. it's just identifying who your audience is. Like, are you a millennial? Then what, what do you like? And uh, if you're not a millennial, then do you have a millennial age colleague or an employee or a family member that you can tap into and gather as much information as you can about what they're doing? Where, what websites are they going to? How are they digesting their content? And there we go. Being yeah. able to kind of start creating a list, just like brain dump all this stuff of like, are they, where do they live? Like, right. where do they live? Not, not only physically, but where, where is their attention already being placed? Yeah. What topics are they interested in? What, how are they reading blogs? Are they on Facebook? I mean, where, where, where can you even find them? So in order to market to millennials, knowing that we're, we're speaking of the marketing where we're going to go out and find new customers to come in. We want to know where their attention 
lies, specifically as a millennial parent, right? Sure. What about the people that we already have that most of them are like we we know who they are because they're sitting in our lobbies. How can we better utilize, I guess it would be internal marketing to grow our businesses uh, basically with let's just take the 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 spending, the the ads out of it. How would a sports entrepreneur increase their business? by marketing to the people that they already have. Do you have any ideas, tactics for that? Okay. So one of the big things that millennials are, are, I mentioned earlier was that they're, they're loyal, right? So one of the other big things is they are, is they, they look to their peers to get that social proof. They want to hear the recommendations from their friends about where should they go. They're, they're big on going into, you know, Facebook groups or on forums or Reddit and asking for recommendations and getting them from people that they trust their peers. So if you have, you have your current customers, you know, one, engage with them again, engage with them and then ask for feedback. You know, millennials are huge on, they want to share about the brands that they're connected with. And if they're having a good experience, they want to post about you on their social media. They want to give you a review because that's, that's part of what is important to them is to share their good experiences. So first I would just say, ask for that feedback, get that social proof and share it. I mean, people don't know what you don't tell them. So that's you might true. have all these great reviews from parents or customers. And if you're not putting it out there somewhere and sharing it with future customers, then no one's going to see it. So make sure you're sharing that. And then just, again, going back to authenticity is just identifying why did you start your business and share your story and kind of tap into get beyond the the. I'm doing air quotes now, like the business, you know, the business profile, right? Like be a person, be a team, show people, show your customers and your future customers that you're a person that has these these, um, core values and how can you connect with them using those. Through you. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because I've always said like I was an entrepreneur before it was cool to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And this is just my theory, but I think that a lot of millennials, they grew up through the last recession in 2008. They were young Mm -hmm. and that hit so many families so hard from an emotional perspective that to me, it looks like they're making different decisions because of that. And they're not relying on that that long-term corporate job. And I just see so much more entrepreneurship in the space. Um, a lot of them, you know, a four-year degree doesn't stretch as far that it than it did 30 years ago. And so you see the value of entrepreneurship. And I think that there's a lot of sports entrepreneurs that don't realize how cool it is that they're an entrepreneur. In fact, there, there's people that are listening to this podcast that still identify as a coach or a manager or a director, and they're a business owner, right? They are an entrepreneur. I, I know for myself, I didn't identify as an entrepreneur until I finally had enough people that told me, you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, no, I'm a gymnastics coach that just did this to support my habit, right? Right. Well, it's the beauty of of having so many tools now at your disposal. I mean, you can go on your computer and just learn about anything now. I mean, you can, you know, don't know what to do. You go on YouTube and you're going to learn how to do it or you listen to a podcast. If we're marketing to someone and we're trying to find their attention and we're trying to engage with them and connect with them on their level, the decisions that they make and how they make decisions are really important to the person that's trying to, to, to share what their value is, right? To share their company, to share their service. How do you think that millennials are deciding things differently than maybe in in years past, in generations past? Well, I think, again, it goes back to how they view the brand. I don't think that it m- may come down to, obviously, prices is always a factor for people, but 
I think it's more about tapping into their emotions and how they feel about buying it and how they feel about themselves when they're doing, when they're engaging in it. So I, again, it's going back to that authenticity of just how are you, how are you coming off? How how do you help them with their own personal uh, mission? You know, like how, how is your, their, their buying decision is affecting, you know, with their ultimate goals. If, if they're, if they're more, um, you know, community oriented or, um, you know, goal oriented or fitness oriented or whatever, Got like it. how are you, is your business helping them achieve their goals? So I think. So really I, it's how does your brand help their brand? Right. Yes, that's exactly it. And it's even when, when you're talking about parents, even you're tapping into more of the, how does, how does it make the mom feel when they're signing their child up for a class? Cause you want, you know, you want mom to feel good in that they're, you know, doing something right for their child, not just choosing an activity, right? So you want to make them feel good about their purchase as a So the education part of it is really important. Right. Like educating them. I I think it's, yeah, going back to that why, like, why would you want to even sign up for this? And how is this good for your child? Or how is this good for yourself? Let's talk a little bit about online tools that we can use as small businesses to reach directly to millennials where, you know, where are they and um, what's something that isn't going to break the bank and how, how do we know how much to, to even spend? And I think that's a really open-ended hard question, (laughs) right? Right. But I mean, we've definitely struggled with that, but just for somebody that's sitting there frozen like I'm overwhelmed by every bit of social media. I'm overwhelmed by all of this. Where do I just start? What's what's one thing that I can do? What is the first step that I can take? I think that it's good to keep in mind that millennials are obviously mobile and phone oriented, right? So 54% of them make their purchases on all of their purchases online. And so that is just how how can you use that to your disposal. Is your website mobile friendly? Like, have you even looked on your phone? What does your website look like on your phone? Do you have a way for them to connect with you via their phone? So it's easy for them to fill out an, you know, contact me form, or can they buy something on their phone or, or call you easily? Do you have your phone number right there that they can click it and not have to Google what your phone number is? So just little things like that, get on your phone, check your website. Uh, Are you have a social media account? I know a lot of people don't even have a Facebook account or an Instagram account. If you are someone who has a gym that is has a lot of things going on that you can take pictures of, utilize those that Instagram account and those stories and, and just kind of start building an audience there. So I think that is the very basic level of where to start is just check your phone to see what's working and what's not. And ask, you know, ask a friend, say, hey, go to my website. Where do you find the holes? And and find That's that a good there. idea. But as, as far as what to spend, I think so, so marketing is one of those things where, you know, 50% of marketing works, but we don't know which 50%, right? So it's, it's, it's a real trial and error. And I think especially if you are a small business and you are looking to grow within your community, I think that a very small budget is fine to start with and you just go from there. So if it's working, you can increase it a little bit because obviously if you're spending $50 a month and you're bringing in three customers and that's worth $150 a month, then you're okay spending more than that, right? So kind of keeping a pulse on what you're spending and what's the return on investment on that spend. So I am a Gen Xer, right? And I will say that I have... Children, I mean, I had kids a little late in my life. So most of my daughter's friends, um, parents are like mid millennials. But regardless of that, what, what has changed in the decision making from a Gen Xer to a millennial in terms of we now have children that we're taking to these sports based businesses? What do you think has changed between? you know, 2010 and 2019? So I think one of the big shifts has been that a lot of the millennial parents don't feel that, you know, there's less of that connection of they feel that their children need to get a scholarship 
for football or baseball or whatever in college, that they want to um, give them a good experience. They want them to be healthy. They want them to be engaged. They want them to be happy and fit, right? So it's kind of this shift between, I don't know if achievement is the right word, but more to a happiness and healthy kind of. Do you think it's holistic? Yeah. Do you think they're more holistic than achievement driven? Yes. I think that it's more of the whole child. Like how are they doing on, you know, socially and emotionally and how are they doing academically and how are they doing physically instead of just in one kind of lane. Whereas where, you know, us children of the eighties, you were kind of, you, you chose one sport. That's that sport specialization kind of that's out the window for the most part. Now there's a lot of kids doing multiple sports and multiple activities. And um, I think that parents are just making those decisions based more on the holistic side of things than the athletic purely. I definitely think that that is an excellent, excellent, excellent opportunity for people that are sitting in our shoes, especially the kids based businesses, because if they're, if we have a generation of people that feel that health and fitness and social emotional health physical health is is more important than achievement then we're going to be able to serve more kids we're not going to have um it's not going to be so competitive because from a business standpoint we do know that when you have a large competitive aspect that it takes a lot of time and a lot of money and they take up a lot of space, quite frankly. And I think it's wonderful to have those leaders and it's wonderful to have, you know, that those people to look up to. And I love competition. I mean, I'm competitive by nature, but, but I definitely think that the competition, it's almost like the game has changed. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And I, I mean, I think it goes back to, I mean, if just look at the trends in adult fitness and athletics. I think that millennials are are more open minded and are willing to kind of step outside of the box of just traditional sports and activities for their kids. And so entrepreneurs have this big open door of you know, and with them being more accessible, these millennial parents being more accessible now, it's so much easier to get in front of them and to kind of show them these new options. I see so many people that I work out with um, just wearing t-shirts of like the Tough Mudders and the Spartan races and OCR. And it's almost like, it's almost like, you know, they love to, they love to compete, but it's more from an athletic standpoint than a player of a specific sport. Because once you get sport specific, then you, you really get like role specific, like player specific. Um, And it, it doesn't develop the whole athlete. Right. So I, I don't know. Well, and what do all those have in common too? Like they're fun, right? Like they, yeah. they don't, you know, millennials don't want to just, you know, punch the clock every day. They, they want to do something that's fun for them too, as, as an athlete, but. Yeah. They want to ask why. And you mentioned it with the brands, right? They want to ask, you know, why did you start your company? What is it all about? And it's not, I, I know I always felt like, like I said, back before entre- entrepreneurship was cool, I always felt like. I needed to pretend that I was like a big company and I needed to to try to do things professionally, which I could never keep up with because we weren't. But then, <laughs> you know, know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. We need we need to redo our handbook. We need to have emergency evacuation plans. Like we need to refine those. And I'm like, okay, like we can't, like we cannot keep up with Eli Lilly here, people. So, and those aren't important what, to millennial. I mean, there's not important to just, you know, our customer base and at a, as a whole. So yeah. yeah, it's, it's how it's, it's impressing the people that you need to impress, not impressing everyone. Right. right? Big companies with unlimited budgets, it's it's their job to keep their boss happy. For an entrepreneur, it's our job to keep our target customer happy, not every customer happy. And sometimes the difference between doing something 80% of what's possible is the difference between life and bankruptcy, right? If we try to... <laughs> execute, you know, to the level of detail. We just have to find those people that understand why we're doing it. Yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying. You hit it right on the head, you know, Seth Godin, my, my boyfriend, um, (laughs) 
says, <laughs> he's a marketing guy, if any, look him up. But um, he says, Every, everyone's not your customer, right? So it's it's really targeting. Who who are you trying to go after with your messaging here mm-hmm. is is knowing that avatar and knowing that it's okay to, to tailor your content. And if, you know, a 50-year-old or, you know, 70-year-old is not going to get your humor online, that's fine because that, they're not your customer. You're mm-hmm. looking for that millennial crowd. So maybe we should do more fails and <laughs> memes. Right. right. <laughs> oh, well, that's been, this has been really helpful, Megan. Thank you very much for being on the podcast. And I will, I will see you soon. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. All right. Um, bye. Bye-bye. Assuming you are a gym owner or coach or manager listening to this podcast, then your target market is sitting in your gym right now while their kids are on the floor. The question is, how does your brand help their brand? They want to feel good, they want to feel right, and they want to share it with their own circle. If you are a Ninja Zone licensee, we offer all kinds of tools to help your business reach these millennial parents, and Megan is always a phone call or email away as well. All right, that's it from us, but I will say that if you go to thesportsentrepreneur.com right now and search for this episode, Marketing to Millennials with Dr. Megan Knoll, we have a link to get some bonus content produced by Megan, and that will also sign you up for our weekly emails from The Sports Entrepreneur. We will notify you of each new episode, and if we have bonus material, we'll include it automatically each week. And if you have any comments or feedback, please share them by commenting on our site, on Facebook, or by emailing us at podcast at the Like what you hear? Leave us a review on iTunes, like our page, The Sports Entrepreneur, on Facebook. Share the love by sharing our podcast on social media using the hashtag The Sports Entrepreneur. And help us help others by spreading the word. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week.